Right, it's in recording mode. <coughs> okay, group one, when you're ready. Hi, everyone. Oh. Ben. Hi. Jack. Um, our cousin. First of all, I'm going to start with radio today. Well, radio today has become a worldwide known source for um, listening to news, music, and everything. At first, people like Dean used to listen to radio back then. Um, like it was mainly the old people that listened to radio back then, but now it's become a worldwide known way of and young audiences can tune in to listen to their favourite stations and you know get interacted with their presenters via um, social networking sites and all that. At first it wasn't like that, so that's how radio has become today. It's become popular and known to every society. Okay, now, the historical and institutional influences upon program making and outputs. Now, according to Ofcom, we suggest ways to implement three-tier structure for radio. They propose to allow some regional stations to share all of their programming in return for providing a version of that station on the national DAB multiplex. This would effectively allow for the creation of new national stations with significant scale and reach. Second, to allow local stations to co-locate with other stations within newly defined areas. So helping them to save its costs, stations could also request to share their local programming within these areas and they could ask to reduce their hours of local programming in return for an increased commitment to local news throughout daytime. And finally, and at the, at the smallest scale, we continue to support the development of community radio, while in the longer term, any digital upgrade would allow the creation of a new type of ultra-local stations. And, and in this modern day and age, the fifth estate plays the biggest part and biggest contributor towards news whether it be any country, anywhere in the world, where, for the BBC, for example, example if, I don't know, Kim Jong-un and, and threatens to wage war once again in an instant, in a, in a click, BBC can suddenly get hold of this information and broadcast it to the people itself. And the fifth estate, being in the internet, helps this towards, towards any up and down the country. Now, the way that radio is advancing in the future is because of uh, modern technology and how technology is advancing. Uh, what radio stations are doing is embracing the other medias, um, which could be seen as almost competition, such things as um, the internet and YouTube, um, a lot more video and television. So, an example with Radio 1, what um, they're trying to do is just put all their um, all their content onto each other media, so a lot of video and a lot of things online to engage what they call the smartphone generation or the younger audiences are always looking at their phones. Um, another advantage that radio has for the future is the use of social networking sites, so um, allowing more conversation between listeners and presenters on Facebook and on Twitter, and as well as just um, one-way texts, which was um, everything that was we've had up until maybe the last 10 years or so. Um, in terms of technology as well, it means that anyone can create a radio station. Um, downloading a piece of simple software onto your computer and then um, having a host website to put it on means it's really, really cheap, it's really easy, and so anyone can do it. So we're looking at more and more stations um, becoming available. Um, one thing, just an extra comment by Zane Lowe, um, he's talking about how radio has been background music. People don't sit around the radio anymore just listening. It's sort of there in the background whilst you're doing other things. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way Zane Lowe's saying. He wants people to really, really engage with things. So that's just the style of presenting that he goes for to make people really, really listen, not just think in the background. Um, social games, what social games? social game um, in radio. Obviously, um, community radio is taking um, more um, pre 
presenters and like young presenters who wants to showcase where they go and instead of like um, leaving them not to get um, experiences on the radio but they're actually bringing them in to um, give more and more to what they're doing it's also helped um, was it, its audience as well because they wouldn't be stuck to one person talking each time there's different varieties of radio shows they could listen to and um, can get involved as well so that's what I think social games has brought to radio now that it helps um, communities and um, young students who wants to get involved in you know socialise on the radio as well Go on and do stuff. Okay, now, here's a big one. The emergence of the prosumer in a global market, place fragmented and differentiated audience, habits and changing roles of the producer. Okay, so, one of the emergence of the prosumer in a global market would be the theme of the radio station, whether it would be talk or music based radio and not to mention the uh, and not to mention its audience itself whether it be a young or a quite older generation whether they are more into his listening to its dramas or its comedies or more wanted to hear of the um, goldies 80s music music or <laughs> whatever is being played right here right now okay in Britain, from around the time of the 1970s and 1980s, there was a different audience habit where the young generation went for a more rebellious punk approach, especially towards music. And by the influence of the pipe Brit radio in the early 1960s, it showed the BBC that the public and the young generation wanted to hear the latest music and popular bands to be broadcasted across the country. And as well, when the pirate radios were closed down, eventually, it, it, was, it was the uh, people who worked as pirate radios that were employed by the BBC that brought the music, music in, making the, uh, making these, making the modern, sorry, making the modern radio stations available today. And with the emergence of advanced computer and internet resources, a radio show can be made easily and affordable at the same time and can be created by anyone. For example, not too long ago oh, I created a five minute drama depicting in a World War One soldier just of an inner and outer monologue. The only thing that I had to use was an Apple Mac, just simply brought up Audacity and basically grabbed sounds, fixed it all together made it sound like it was exactly there, there as if recorded there and there. And if I could do that, then anyone else could be capable of doing such, such stories like that if they wanted. And in, a, and in the modern day, producers are often heard on the air and play a larger role in, team, in the team behind the microphone. Well, I heard Jack's piece that he did on the, on the computer and it sounded absolutely professional. You could put it on um, Radio 4 and just no one would know that someone in the university sat on the computer and did it, so it was really good. Now, um, new platforms are emerging to listen to radio. Um, uh, one way that's been mentioned is listen to radio without an actual radio. Um, obviously, we've still got DAB at the moment. Um, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing is still being talked about. I'm not going will actually switch over completely to the end is yet to be seen. Um, obviously television, um, you can put the radio, any radio station up on there. Online is a big one now because you can listen to any station worldwide, which is a big impact lately. Um, and mobile. Mobile is still yet to come into full effect because you can't get Wi-Fi everywhere quite yet. And to go off data off your 3G is still quite expensive at the moment. So it's one to keep an eye on. And, um, Possibly once it becomes a lot cheaper and a lot more affordable to listen to radio on your mobile phone, you'll see a lot more people doing it, and possibly a lot more young people who are obviously on their phones all the time. Um, one thing we're sort of kind of yet to see is internet radio in cars. So again, that's going to make pretty much every station in the world available in your car at the touch of a button. So it's quite an important thing, which um, because cars is where most people listen to the radio really at the moment. So, 
it's one to keep an eye on. It probably will become a huge thing in the future. Um, well, well, economy downturn on like radio. Like, um, obviously, radio was making loads of money back when the economy was good because um, commercial radios were making 500 million a year on due to advertisements and other things, and the BBC was making revenues of 217 million and other things due to that. But now the economy downturn, um, everyone is trying to re reduce what it's got. Community radio doesn't get more advertisement on what their, sh their shows because it's for communities and stuff, so they don't intend to let advertisers. Advertisers are not interested in communities. They rather go for the commercial ones, but um, and commercial and public ones, but the public radio doesn't do advertisement, so they're trying to reduce their workforce, which um, is bringing more down, down turn to the the economy right now because um, everyone is trying to reduce it and save money to do something else. So I think that's how radio's downturn is coming down in the next economy down is coming down in the next two or three years time. The ranges in programs, institutions, and across platforms. Now, big one here. If you um, look back to, like, um, say, our parents' generation, they would have the only way to be able to listen to music would be via a radio. But taking into account the technology of today, through smartphones, through computers, even through your own TV. For a radio, you do not necessarily need a radio in order to listen to it. Back then, it might have seemed complete madness to actually say that, but now it is possible. For it is literally everywhere, even on the internet, available anywhere, anytime, and anyone can just go in and listen to it, just like, like you mentioned, of being able to listen to it via your own car. For programme-wise, dramas or comedies can be listened without the use for acting only voices. I have, um, I have listened to the radio shows. For, for example, Count, there was a comedy called Count Arthur Strong played on Radio 4. I listened to it and as well I have seen the TV version and the one I like more is the radio version rather than the television program. Because, in a way, it makes you think in your head to what the situation is rather than having to see with your own eyes. For what the joke could be, for a joke can sneak up on you at any time where you think of one thing but could mean the other thing altogether. Other, just gets you by surprise. And, finally, one of the changes that could be used for radio for the future would be to create a full feature film with Hollywood actors using their local expressions, using their vocal expressions, to describe a scene and act the part. I mean, for example, um, for CD, they actually have the Lord of the Rings version, where you listen to it, rather than, having, rather than the version that we all know, that is the one that we watch. For, exa for it, it's meant to project the image into your own head and take you there itself, just like with the drama piece earlier, and henceforth, it should work just the same as the TV or films of equal. Now, I was looking at the structural changes um, to radio at the moment and what's going to be happening in the future. One thing we're seeing is commercial radio continue to grow, um, purchasing smaller stations, such as what happened um, on Capital Bot Choice. So, um, it's quite controversial. It's not favoured by a lot of people, but that's just the way it's going um, because they're the ones with a lot more money. Um, and in the same way, community and local stations. Um, are struggling at the moment a little bit because
because of the economy, because of local businesses not being able to afford the advertising. Um, another thing, young people don't seem to really care about local radio um, because it doesn't really affect them. If you're not driving, you don't need to listen to the traffic and because they're used to a world where you know about all the worldwide news, they're not really that more interested in some smaller news that's happened more locally. So that could be a reason why for our generation local radio isn't as appealing. Um, something else, well another reason why people are struggling because of radio advertising, because it's a lot cheaper to advertise on the internet. And if the internet is just as accessible as, as radio, which it one day will become, then it makes sense for businesses to go for advertising online rather than um, on your car radio or something. Um, influences like um, obviously the music, the, mu the music has had a lot of influence on um, young young audience listening to radio because they were rather listening to um, the hip hop pop music and that. And there are other stations also which is good for um, older audience like BBC Four and all those um, documentary stuff they do and on it so and also um, the cross platforms has helped us so the internet and um, radio and stuff um, young, younger audience would rather switch on their phone and listen to radio on their phone listen to their favorite music on radio on their phone that's bringing more what well, audience that's attracted more younger audience which is like what every radio station wants to achieve attract more younger audience like than old audience so, I think the music has brought more influence on in young people listening to radio than anything like any other thing else. Any questions? That's it for us. Thank you very much. Any questions from group two for group one? Have any uh, feedback for group? Wow, like good effort. Point Top out. job, guys. Um, yeah, loads. I mean, I'd, I'd give my notes to you, yeah. I guess, for Mark. Yeah, but uh, they're, they're, they need to take on board cool. um, yeah, the um, observations you have. Great effort. Don't be scared. It's, it's really hard doing this stuff. It's much easier in a studio talking into a stick, isn't it? And forget about those thousands of people listening. I always think that's really funny. I get more nervous talking in front of two or three, but you stick me in front of 30,000, I'm fine. So you will get over it, I promise you. Um, a couple of things, I think. I think, for me, there was perhaps a little bit of a misunderstanding about what cross-platform and, and the economy and the structure of radio, do you know what I mean? And what those words really mean in the real world. Um, a couple of things I've touched on here. I love the fact that gold is now the 80s. <laughs> We're screwed. Gold, when I came around, was, set, was the 60s. It was all the old 60s tunes. But you're absolutely right. I mean, that is where it shifted onto, and it will continue to shift. It made me feel a bit old for there for a bit. Um, Absolutely, but this is it. I think this is one of the things I was going to touch on is that it's about, you know, you're obviously you're, you're young people and you're focusing on your interests and what you listen to in radio and what you want. You want hip hop, you want rap, you go on the phone. You know, you've got tune in, you've got radio play, you can tune into any radio station anywhere in the world that focuses on that, and predominantly that's in the States. So I guess the question is about the diversity of what we offer in this country, and I'm with you, I don't think we offer enough diversity. And tied in with the economic situation is that the fact that these stations are being bought up and made into big groups, they're taking away that diversity, you know, and yes it's an economic decision because they want to save money, but actually the end product of what's available for you to listen to is suffering, you know, radio is suffering, you know, consequently because of the decisions that are being made to chuck all these stations together and churn out the same old crap, you know, that's what they're doing to save money. Um, it's really interesting, you know, internet, radio and cars, something that Paul and I were talking about before, before we came in, you know. When I first got into radio, it was all about DAB, DAB's going to change the world, it's going to be this, that and the other, and it hasn't. You know, what is the future? I think absolutely, younger people listening to radio is what we need to engage in now. It's quite sad hearing what you had to say, to be honest. You know, that, that local radio's not cared about, young people aren't interested in radio, well, I pack up shop. You know, am I going to pay my rent? You know, because I'm reliant on you listening to the radio. When you work in radio, you're going to be reliant on the next generation of people listening to the radio, or we're all screwed. You know, and conversely, you know, you listen to Radio 4, they're targeting an older audience. You know, it's making sure that there is something for everybody out there, and yet it pays the bills. And for me, you know, looking at it economically, how radio is sold is really interesting, you know. You're talking about young people and what they need. Young people are not targeted for a reason, because you've got no money. 
that's the truth of the matter. That's why there's not a big hip hop station in Bournemouth because you don't have enough money to be able to. Do you know what I mean? There's not enough yeah. businesses to support it. You know, is there enough music shops, trainer shops, or whatever it is that you know is ticking? You know, that you want to buy? Are they spending the money on a station that focuses on you? You know, that's how it, money makes the world go around, doesn't it? So the reason why stations such as Heart and that do rather well and wave is because they target in a 35 plus audience who've got more disposable income. They've got more money to spend, so they're interested in double glazing companies, conservatories, cars that are being offered at 150 quid a month, whatever it is they're flogging. People are interested because they're going to spend money. You see what I mean? That's how it works. So the reason why those niche stations really struggle is all about the money. All about the money. Find a way of uh, find a way of making money for uh, the niche brands, and you'll have uh, got the holy grail on radio, as far as I can see. Um, Jack, is it you, Jack? Are you, you Jack? Is that your name? The one and only. Sorry. The one and only. The one and only. Oh, well, there's a few stations named after you. Um, the power of sound is what you're talking about, and yeah. I love hearing yeah, about it. People named King Nelson as well at the same time. Indeed. The, um, you were talking about the power of sound, about how you know, using radio, used audio to make things come alive. Yes. That's what we call the power of sound. That is the most powerful thing we've got. You know, radio is very intimate. It's the only medium that you can really sort of take with you everywhere you go. So it's in your car with you, it's in your kitchen when you're cooking, if you've got kids. Everywhere you go, you can take the radio with you. I don't take my laptop in the bath with me. Do you know what I mean? You struggle. You, know, you talk about Wi-Fi and connectivity and cross-platform problems. That's why radio used to be king, you know. Now there are lots of different threads of radio, you know, and social media has made it um, a different animal to what it used to be. But what you were talking about is the power of sound, and that's the reason actually why I ended up working in radio, because I heard a radio ad. I have responded to a radio ad that somebody placed, and I got my job in radio. It's called the power of sound, and you described it really well. Whether or not they make a feature-length film on radio, I don't know yet. But um, it's an interesting concept. And yeah, the reason why I said that was because um, uh, our tutor, Philip, he's trying to get his doctor's degree. And he basically described this experiment he was going to try and do with uh, Fast and the Furious. So, like, turn that into a sound based feature itself to try and see if people really like it, just to be able to listen to it and think of it in their own head rather than. And just seeing it with your own eyes, just to see the, just hearing the explosions in the background, and rather than be able to see like the whole car flying in the air. It's imagination. It's the power of sound. It's what makes you think of it. You know, if you hear a dripping tap, you visualise a tap. You visualise the sink. You visualise where that noise is coming from. It's fascinating. That's that's why radio is so powerful. Um, it's been done. Have you ever hit the narrator button on your remote control at home? I accidentally did this the other day. New television, hit the narrator button, and there's some guy that says, the woman looks at him in a really cross manner and then turns and leaves the room. What's that? <laughs> it exists, you know, it's there for, you know, it's there for blind people already. Uh, and also you talk about almost audio books. Been around a long time, you know, very powerful. Radio 4 obviously does a lot of dramas and documentaries, you know, that are, they're incredible. Um, but they're not going to be of interest to somebody who wants to hear, you know, the latest hip-hop tunes that come out of L.A. Yes. So it's about markets, it's about economy, it's about business, and that's what radio is now. You know, yes, we have fun, and we get in the studio and we have a lot of fun, of course we do. There needs to be a science behind what we do, and there needs to be you know, a business mind behind what we do. And I think internally in radio, you talked about structural changes to radio per se. Structurally, it's changed in a radio station. So back in the day, you would have a presenter, you'd have a producer, you might even have a researcher as well. Now they were always gifts of the BBC, and the reason why is because you pay for the BBC. You pay your licence fee, you're paying Zane those wages. No wonder he wants it to be in the foreground. You don't pay my wages, but I still create radio every day. So it's about where the money comes from. BBC, you pay for it. You can expect the best quality on Radio 4. If you're not getting it, complain, because you're paying your money every year. True. Local commercial radio, we're reliant on those irritating adverts. The ones that get in your head and you start, you know, you go out into town and you're singing the United Taxi's phone number. Radio's oh. just done its job. You know, I could sing that, half cut. That's what radio, commercial radio is about. We don't have the luxury of researchers, producers. We don't have that, you know. And today's radio presenter is a very different animal, or producer in fact. It's a very different animal to what it used to be. You have to do your own show prep, don't you, Paul? Do everything, mate. Everything yourself. So it's, that's structurally, internally in radio. 
we've gone from having loads of people to run around and do everything. You know, you always hear about the joke is that I always get students saying, I'll come in and I'll even make tea. It's like, you make your own tea, do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not um, a job anymore. Everybody wears multiple hats in the radio station because we're competing with the likes of the BBC. We're competing with social media. We're competing with trying to get you to turn your Xbox off. I don't want you to listen to the radio through your TV. I want you to be listening to local community radio. I want you to be listening to local radio. Whether or not local radio engages with young people, I don't know. I've got a student show on hot radio. Get involved. Make it happen. What can I do to engage with you? What would make you listen to my radio station? Write me a list. Tell me what I need to do and I'll do it. That's the future of radio. So thank you so much. You really did really well. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, guys. Should we have a quick 10 minute break? Yeah. So we've been listening for 20, 25 minutes. Um, Jack, do you want to pause the camera? Are you guys using the same camera? Yeah. Okay, just pause it.